Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Clarice Lim. Today I'm going to share with you P3 Science, Human System. Okay, so what is a system? A system is actually made out of several parts that work together to perform a job. So a plant on an animal is made out of several smaller systems working together to enable it to live. And a human is therefore a system as well, made out of organ systems. The different organ systems work together to ensure that the whole body can function properly, right? So an organ system is made out of different organs working together to perform one or more important functions. So how many different types of systems are there that you need to know? They are all over here. Let's take a look at the circulatory system first. What does the word circulatory mean? It comes from the word circulate. To circulate means to go around and around and around. So this is exactly what our blood does in our body. That's why it's called the circular system made out of the heart and the blood vessels. There are two types of blood vessels, namely the arteries and the veins. The arteries takes blood away from the heart. They are usually slightly thicker, so they take blood away from the heart. The blood coming out from the heart can go to the rest of the body or it can also go to the lungs for us to breathe out the oxygenated air. Correct? So arteries is coming out from the heart. The veins send blood back to the heart. Okay, so this is what you need to remember these two keywords, arteries and veins. Usually some schools will ask them in their test papers. What is the circulatory system for? Then the circulatory system is for carrying digested food and oxygen to all parts of the body. It also carries waste material away from different parts of the body, usually for us to breathe out. Right, so that's what the blood is for. So if it's digestive food, it will come from the small intestine. Later, you will get the details, right? So there is actually two different types of blood in our body. So that's why you see the red and the blue inside the 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 circulatory system. Usually, of course, our our vessels are not blue in color. They are just deoxygenated. It is just to show you the difference between oxygenated, which is usually portrayed as red, the deoxygenated portrayed as blue. So Oxygenated blood means it is rich in oxygen. Okay, it, it is carried from the lungs because we breathe in from the lungs. It's oxygenated blood goes to the heart. The heart then pumps the, the, the oxygenated blood to all parts of the body. When the deoxygenated, the oxygen is used up by the body, it carries, it produces the carbon dioxide and it goes back from our body to the heart and the heart brings it to our lungs and the lungs will allow us to breathe out the deoxygenated air. Okay, so this is what the circulatory system is about, the picture here, right? The respiratory system works very closely with the circulatory system because everything is a system, they work together, isn't it? So the respiratory system usually involves the nose, the windpipe, the lungs, and the diaphragm over here, okay? So what is the circulatory system for? The circulatory system is to take in and also to remove air from the body. So what is the air composition that we inhale? Okay, Some schools actually test this. They will ask the students what are the kind of air that we inhale and then they contrast it with the air that is exhaled. So a lot of children will think that, oh, we take in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide. Simple as that. Actually, no. To be very detailed, we inhale nitrogen as well. We inhale oxygen as part of it. We also inhale carbon dioxide and others as 1%. So this is the entire composition of air that we breathe in. I mean, there isn't a filter in our nose to say, okay, uh, no nitrogen, uh, no carbon dioxide, I only want air, I only want oxygen. No, it doesn't work that way. We breathe in everything, right? So this is the air composition in our environment, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% of others, which includes carbon dioxide. What happens in the body is that we actually take in oxygen, we use up the oxygen and as a result, we produce carbon dioxide. So what happens is we don't use any of the nitrogen, some little bit of it, only a very, very small percentage, so it's actually not reflected in the whole numbers here. Oxygen is exhaled out at 5% less than what you have inhaled. Okay, so you inhale 21%, we use 5%, 4 to 5% around there. Okay, so all these are rounded up numbers. So 16% of oxygen is exhaled. Right, so carbon dioxide is produced a lot more, okay, because our body uses oxygen, synthesizes it, and produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct. So we actually exhale out 4% carbon dioxide into the air, and others will therefore make up 2%. Okay, so that's the exhaled air percentage. 
what happens to the diaphragm then how does the diaphragm help us the diaphragm helps to push up the the lungs so when it, we are breathing out air the diaphragm actually expands itself how do you remember that it expands because you need to curve up curving actually takes up more space correct so the curving so it curves up over here so it pushes out the air so therefore when you breathe out the diaphragm expands right so when you breathe in the diaphragm contracts because the diaphragm will become a straight line so this is a bigger surface so it expands this becomes a smaller surface it contracts so imagine you breathe out diaphragm expands breathe in diaphragm contracts okay so this is something that you need to remember some exam questions actually ask them what is the muscular system for very simple it works with the skeletal system to help the body to move what does the skeletal system do? The skeletal system supports the body and gives the body the shape. Okay, especially the spine over here, also called the backbone. The spine helps to lift the body up and stand upright. Okay, so our skeleton system uh, includes the skull to the rib bone to the backbone, the spine over here, and the pelvic bone and all the arms bone and the the um, uh, the leg bone. Okay, everything. So it. Muscular system helps different parts of the body to move. It supports the skeletal system. The skeletal system gives the body the shape, protects the important organs. For example, the rib bone protects the heart and the lungs, right? And the skull protects the brain. And uh, it, skeletal system works with the muscular system to help us to move, already mentioned, right? So the digestive system breaks down food into simpler form. There's a lot of things you need to know in digestive system. So these are all the small little terms that you need to know. What does the mouth do? Mouth is the first step of digestion. Remember that digestion starts in the mouth. Usually they will test you and ask you uh, when does digestion start. It starts right in the mouth because the teeth will have to break things into smaller parts, smaller pieces, and then the tongue will help to mix the food with the saliva. In this case, the saliva is the digestive juice. Remember that saliva is the digestive juice. It helps to digest part of the food already in your mouth. So this tongue actually helps to mix the food and the saliva into small balls for, of food for soloing so that it's easier for you to solo. Small balls solo through the gullet and this gullet actually makes up for muscles. It pushes the balls of food from the heart into the stomach. Okay, so food doesn't drop down because of gravity alone. It actually has muscles in the gullet to help push down the food all the way down. So even if you're upside down, your food solo still can go down to your stomach. Okay, because the gullet actually has muscles contracting to push it down. So what happens in the stomach over here? The stomach churns the food. Right? The stomach doesn't move, of course. There's digestive juices inside to mix the food up and to digest even more of the food. And therefore, after the stomach passes into the small intestine inside here, the small intestine is inside. Okay, don't get confused. It's actually behind this large intestine over here. The large intestine is lined the, in, the, the small intestine. Okay, so what happens in the small intestine? Further digestion takes place. And because the walls of the small intestine is very, very thin, it is connected to a lot of blood vessels. When the food is finally digested into the smallest component ever, this digested food, which is a form of energy, passes through our uh, passes through the walls of the small intestine and and it infuses into the blood vessels which then is carried all over our body to give our body the energy, the strength, give the energy to the muscles to move our bones so that we can move, so that we can think, so that we can do a lot of things. Okay, So food is passed to our whole body like that. It is passed through the digestion system, goes into the circulatory system and then to all parts of our body including the muscular system and the brain. Okay, So digested food passes through the intestinal walls into the blood and blood is transported to different parts of the body. What happens to the large intestines? That's the last stage over here. So large intestine does not digest food anymore. It only absorbs water. From the undigested food so the digestion ends at the small intestine small intestine is the last stage of digestion you must remember that a lot of test paper asks us that when does digestion start in the mouth where does it end in the small intestine there is absolutely no digestion in the large intestine it is only there to be absorbed of the water 
digested undigested food is there whereby the water is di is is absorbed out okay and then what happens to this undigested food it is passed through to our anus where we pass out okay so those will be the bowels so this is what you need to know for human systems let's try a few questions over here you may pause the video to try this out yourself. Think about the lines. How do you join them together? Circulatory system is what? Muscular system is what? Respiratory system is what? Skeletal system is what? Okay, pause the video. Try it out on your own. Okay, so the circulatory system carries nutrients, water and oxygen to all parts of the body. Do you get that? So this is a straight line across over here. What does the muscular system do? The muscular system helps the different parts of the body to move, right? So the muscles are attached to the bone. So as the muscles contract and relax, it actually moves the bone. That's how we move our body parts. Respiratory system takes in oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide. Okay, so this is where we breathe in, breathe out, respiratory system. Skeletal system protects the important organs in the body. For example, the brain, the heart, the lungs. That's how you draw them. So the diagram below shows the path in which food travels in the human body. So food enters the mouth, passes to the gullet, passes to the stomach, and the next step, digestive food enters the bloodstream. You should know that for P, it is small intestine. Okay, so yes, this is small intestine. And the next one will be the large intestine. Yes. What substance is passed from P to Q? Just now is already mentioned. Can you remember? Think about it. No digestion happens in the large intestine, therefore the only substance that is passed to the large intestine is undigested food from small to large. Okay, so from the large and then it is passed down to the anus. Remember that. Study the diagram below carefully. So this is the skeletal system. You should know that. Q protects the brain. It is a skull. Again, R refers to the rib cage. S refers to the spine over here. T is the bones of the hand. So Q is not part of the skeletal system, of course not, okay? So it is false, definitely it is, a, Q is the brain, uh, the skull, it is a part of the skeletal system, okay? So the R, does the R protect only the lungs? Of course not, it protects also the heart. S helps us to stand upright, just now already mentioned the spine, it helps us stand upright, so it is true. The T works with the muscles to allow movement. Uh, does it? Yes. T is a hand bone. Yes, it allows, um, it works with the muscles to allow movement. In fact, the rest of the body too, right? Okay, so that's the answer. Joseph swam from one end of the pool to the other end, which two body system must work together to enable movement in the water. So they already give you the answer, skeletal system and also the muscular system. This is the two system that allows him to move. The diagram below shows Lara eating an apple. How do the teeth help in the digestion of the apple she is eating? Just now already mentioned, the teeth helps to chew the food into smaller pieces, right? So this is what happens. Your keyword will be chew and then it will be smaller pieces. This will be the keywords that you need to write. Name the digestive juice found in the saliva and that will be the I mean, it's found in the mouth, I told you the answer. <laughs> Saliva, yes. Name another organ that produces digestive juice. Okay, there is two answers over here. In fact, you can write either one of them. Another organ that produces digestive juice is either the stomach or the small intestine. Diagram below shows the human digestive system, which part of the digestive system really just dig digestive juice. Just now already mentioned, so you should already know this. It will be the mouth, right? Followed by the stomach and followed by the small intestine, okay? Don't join to this one. Huh? This one points at the large intestine, so it will be the small intestine here, pointing inside, right? So the following table shows the amount of undigested food left in each organ, right? This is 10, 10, 6, 2. So how many units of undigested food is left in the large intestine before it is removed from the body? Small intestine is the last part of digestion. It doesn't pass on any other things apart from undigested food. Therefore, this answer is 2 in the large intestine. So explain your answer exactly what I said. Digestion does not take place in the large intestine. Okay, so that's the answer. 
that's all for today's (uh) human system I hope you understood me subscribe to our youtube channel for more videos coming up bye bye